Hey sports fans, Coach Nick here and welcome to B-Ball Breakdown. I'm excited to be able to go through the China versus Philippines FIBA Asia Finals. And I know that there's a lot of controversy on the, on the Filipino side as far as the bus was, wasn't charged and they couldn't get there on time and didn't warm up, but you know what? That kind of stuff happens. So what you really have to do to overcome that is to have a very solid game plan and to be able to play through that. And you throw in the refereeing, which was somewhat suspect, and I could see why the Filipino people would be very upset about what happened. However, the bottom line is, without the proper discipline and underlying fundamentals being played on both offense and defense, you ain't going to win a game when the team is better. And let's face it, China had much bigger, better athletes, and they had to play a lot better as a team to overcome that. The game started out well for the Philippines as they opened in a 2-3 zone. The best way to attack a zone is with dribble penetration, but China bails out the defense with the worst shot in basketball with your foot on the three-point line. The Philippines push the ball, get a good drag screen, and the screener's man just watches as William gets a nice floater. On the inbounds, the Philippines get a really nice handoff into a double staggered pin down and a wide open three ball. China started to attack the corners of the zone and once the forward doubled down in the post, China simply swung the ball out top. Had the weak side guard closed out better, you can see they would have had an even more wide open shot from three on the weak side. As it was, they knocked down this shot. You can see how China wanted to form a strong side triangle to shift the zone. The Philippines constantly sent two defenders to the ball, which is a mistake, and this opened up shots for China all night. One of the biggest weaknesses of a 2-3 zone is the weak side rebounding, particularly when you're 6 inches shorter than your opponent there. Here's the first call that raised an eyebrow for me. On the weak side, De Ocampo is way undersized, but he simply boxes out his man. China gets the rebound, De Ocampo falls down, so this should have just been a no call. However, it wasn't like China got all the calls. Here, Ding gets whacked in the face and the refs ignore it, giving the Philippines the steal. I did like how the Philippines showed zone, then it went to man after the first pass. However, Blatch gets beat way too easily, and China's size was way too much once the ball got to the rim. Later in the first, Blatch drives in transition, and you can see the Chinese player dive in front of him, forcing him off balance. To me, this was a 50-50 call and could have gone either way, and the Philippines at least were able to retain possession on the fight for the loose ball, so not much harm done. I like this play the Philippines run where they back screen for the wing, then screen the screener to the corner. However, you can see why this is a good call on the Philippines. The screener's feet are way too wide and he continues to lean into the defender, impeding his progress. Because the Philippines are so much smaller, the referee should focus on the box out and keeping the game even. Here's another guard boxing out a big and he shows great effort to keep his man off the boards. I suspect the referee calls the foul because his left arm is hooked around the Chinese player's waist, but Wang has his forearm buried in Abueva's neck, then proceeds to shove him out of the way. China was clearly taking advantage of the situation, yet was rewarded with a foul call. And again, it wasn't like the refs called every foul in the Philippines. Here's a drive with lots of contact on the shooter that was not called. As we saw before, the Philippines start in zone, then switch to man. However, this requires perfect communication. But Intel and Pingris do not talk, and both close out on the ball at the same time, allowing an easy pass to the basket area and more free throws. Again, the zone is susceptible to offensive rebounds, and China hurt them with 11 for the game. Here's a good lesson for defenders. No matter how clean the block is, and this one was very clean, if you wildly swat at the shot with your arm, the rest will call this almost every time. On this attempt at a dribble handoff, you can see there might be some contact by the defender reaching in. However, De Ocampo shouldn't have let this bother him, and play could have continued. Watch how he establishes his right foot as his pivot, then picks it up before passing. He needs to play through this kind of contact, not rely on the refs to bail him out. The referees clearly started to bother the Philippines, and midway through the second quarter, on a scramble for a loose ball, Hontiveros gets knocked down. This easily could have been a foul call, but instead it's a jump ball. 
Hontiveros is lucky he wasn't called for a technical for grabbing the player's foot. It's too easy for the Philippines to blame the referees, especially when so much of their offense looked like this. Stagnant, no weak side action, and a bad contested shot with lots of time on the shot clock. However, when there was a stop in play and the Philippines could call it, they did well, like this high post entry into a back door for an and one. But this was very rare. On another timeout, the Philippines run horns, and it works fantastically. High post entry into a pop out for the weak side big as the point guard screens for him. However, they hardly ever ran this. And way too many of their possessions look like this. A nine dribble isolation that leads to a contested step through jumper from 17 feet that bricks. Another call down low on an undersized player for the Philippines, but they did have an argument that Yi was in the lane for a full seven seconds before the foul was committed. That said, this is certainly a foul. Here's that really nice set where the Philippines back screen, then screen the screener to the corner, with a gorgeous progression of a hammer screen on the weak side. But why doesn't Romeo shoot this? This is as open as he's ever going to be. Instead, he takes a terrible shot with plenty of time on the shot clock, and the referees will not help him out with this bad decision. To make matters worse, the zone was struggling with his rotations all night. Here, Ganuelas is the guard in the zone, so he should never ever rotate down to the ball in the corner. A simple pass right back gets them a wide open three, and China takes control of this game for good. In the third, the Philippines really went away from the good team ball we saw in the first half, as Blatz tries a five dribble isolation on top. While he scores, it's fool's gold. This is not the way the Philippines can win this game. For only the second time all game, the Philippines run horns again after China shot free throws. A simple high post entry allows the player in the right corner to come around two screens, get the pitch, and nail another three. Why didn't they run this set more? Things just wouldn't go the Philippines way in this game. After a beautiful steal, it looks as though Norwood just falls down. However, the replay shows he got whacked hard in the face, right in front of the ref. I would like to see Norwood not crumple to his knees after a hit to the face, though this absolutely should have been called a foul. Down by 10 midway through the third, you must get a great shot, and I don't think an early hop three off a pick and roll was the best shot they could get. It caught them out of balance getting back on defense, and nobody picks up the ball till it was too late. Then they had three guys go to it, leaving Lee to get as wide open a look from three as he'll ever get. Again, down 13, and with the game about to get out of hand, the Philippines needed to run good offense, like horns. But instead, get this 11 dribble isolation where the defense doesn't have to work much, and a terrible step back contested mid-range jumper that ends up an air ball. In the fourth, the Philippines are still making it a game with their effort, but this was a back-breaking possession as they get a great deflection and the clock winding down. But watch this excellent spin move into a foul line jumper by Guo, taking the wind right out of the Philippines' sails. Again, they show zone, then switch it to a man, and China just isolates out top. Blatch watches as Antiveros gets beat off the dribble for the easy layup. Again, William isolates for the whole possession, as this game has just about slipped away for the Philippines. I'd like to have seen more discipline on offense from them to get better shots. No call on the little bit of contact on the shot, but in the scramble, I suppose the referee counted the dribble William used to get the control of the ball, and when he picked it up, then started dribbling again, it was a travel. William hurt the Philippines with his play all game, and doubling the ball one pass away simply let his man get another wide open three, giving China an insurmountable 16 point lead. So there you have it sports fans. The key here is that the Philippines are most likely always going to be outsized whenever they play an international competition, and that's all the more reason why they have to be more disciplined on offense to get better shots more consistently. 
if they're going to isolate against teams that are a little bit better physically than them, they're going to have a hard time scoring. And then also on their 2-3 zone to man to man, what I did show you was only a small piece of the puzzle here where they, the rotations were off and they kept rotating more than one guy to the ball and it was easy for China to be able to see over the defense and find the open man and you give them enough open shots, they're going to knock them down. And so they need to go back to the work, get back in the gym and clean this stuff up. And if they do, then they have a good shot at competing in the Olympics because they certainly have the heart to play Puso. And um, I'm excited to watch more of them and see how they develop because I know it'll be really exciting for them to play in the Olympics. And we'll definitely break down games there on B-Ball Breakdown. So thanks for joining us. And don't forget at B-Ball Breakdown, we're not a channel, we're a conversation. You win.